Hello, everyone. It's time for Fantasy Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanis. This is episode 263, season 11. Today's date is October 7, 2023, and welcome to the program. On today's program, uh, we start off with a sad note. I will do a tribute episode of uh, Dick Buckus of the Chicago Bears. Uh, he died this week. And I will talk about uh, my memories of watching him on television. Uh, Talk a little bit about his uh, football career and also his acting career, which, uh, truthfully, that's what I remember most of it. So, uh, and also I'll talk about a product uh, you don't see anymore. It's Chicklets gum. I used to see this uh, gum all the time, but now it's gone. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Uh, well, I do know, but I'll explain uh, later on in the program. Okay, so uh, right now the program will go into a commercial break. This program is brought to you by Aviance Perfume. <laughs> I remember this one. It's from Prince Machabelli. And this commercial is from 1975. And uh, uh, after the commercial, I will explain about this product and my memories of uh, seeing the TV commercials. So sit back and relax, and I'll be right back. Thank you, everyone. Sweet, and I've been good. I've had a whole full day of motherhood, but I'm gonna have an Aviance night. Prince Machabelli brings you Aviance, a radiant new perfume that lasts through the night. And what a way to start it! We're gonna have an Aviance night. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have an Aviance night. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Aviance Perfume by Prince Machabelli. He also made Wind Song. Do you remember that? Wind Song stays in your mind. <laughs> oh, boy. There was another one. I can't think of the other one. Uh, we'll see. Um, I, I remember this commercial very well. You can find it on YouTube. It's this a woman. She's in the kitchen, and uh, she's doing a little striptease. <laughs> Taking off her rubber glove because she's cleaning the oven, and then she and then uh, well, she didn't take off her clothes. So, and she wants to have an obvious night. <laughs> Probably with her husband. I think it's her husband. I don't know. It's could be her boyfriend. Well, who knows? Well, she said uh, had enough of motherhood. I assume. Let's okay. Never mind. <laughs> So I remember seeing this commercial uh, when I was little. I probably, it was around in grade school. Yeah, and uh, this product was around quite a while. And uh, they don't make it anymore. You can find it on eBay, which I did search, which is to my amazement. It's there, you know. Uh, so that's one of the famous uh, perfume commercials of the 70s. They did a lot in the 80s, too. And, uh, you know, you can, like I said, you can still find them on YouTube if you'd like. Okay. So that's it for that. <laughs> At the beginning of the program, I said I will do my tribute episode uh, to Dick Buckus of the Chicago Bears. He died this week. And also I will talk about Chicklet's gum. Talk about my memories of this gum. Uh, before I get started, I want to mention two things. Uh, one, well, first, um, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show. You see, I've been taking two medications. Uh, one is uh, Orgovix and Xtandi. There was a little snag with the insurance, and I haven't taken Xtandi for about since August 18th, and uh, it was awful. So it's like a month and a half. I never got the medication. Finally, they worked it out. They got approval, and I received it yesterday. So I'm taking, I took it last night. You take four tablets. So thank goodness. I got about eight refills. So this will last until I see my oncologist in February. And I will see my urologist in November 29th, right after Thanksgiving. Okay. Anyway, uh, so the second thing I want to talk, uh, mention, excuse me, is uh, this week was my birthday. It was on August, October 4th, this Wednesday. And, uh, uh, I was overwhelmed by birthday wishes, greetings. Oh my God! From text, email, uh, a couple of phone calls, you know, and uh, it was still going until yesterday. 
<laughs> it was October 6th, you know, and uh, it's amazing. And it was for my friends, uh, a few relatives, uh, my followers from Band of Chicago. Then um, the, uh, the friends were from my high school, place where I used to work, uh, you know, grade school. It's amazing because most of them, my friends uh, from grade school and high school, they all turned 60. So I joined the 60s club. Sounds like a hippie club to me. So so I'm, I'm one of them. And then there's a few more uh, people to celebrate. You know, it's just October. And uh, I want to say thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Oh, I had the best birthday ever. Um I didn't do much posting, you know, because I know I'm, I was inundated. And I thank I, – I did thank everyone. I hope I didn't. If I miss someone, uh, I'm, I apologize. So uh, thank you. And I uh, had a nice dinner. Uh, I posted that on my wall. It was uh, keftedes, Greek style meatballs, one of my favorites. And also, my mother did not bake a cake this time. No, she ordered one from the bakery, which is great. You know, uh, because you don't find bakeries. Uh, around not not really uh so yeah she just went to one and they asked him can you make a cake you know for my son and they said sure so she had to wait a while uh i don't remember how long maybe 15 minutes or something like that but uh they they baked it and then she bought it and she brought it home and it was a beautiful surprise uh it was nice and we there's still there's still some left <laughs> so i'm gonna have a piece later and uh it's, it was great. Uh, so thank you again for your comments and your wishes. Uh, I'm very blessed, you know. As a, So I'm still healthy. Just, you know, I want to live to, you know, a long, long time and hope to beat this cancer, you know, this prostate cancer. So uh, I'm doing okay now. So we'll see. Okay, right now I'm going to talk about Dick Buckus. Uh, when this the news was announced, uh, uh, when was it? October fifth? Yeah, right after my birthday. Uh, a lot of people were shocked. They really was. But yeah, well, he was 80 years old, and uh, I don't know what ailments he had, but uh, but that came out of the blue. And because you know the the Chicago Bears were playing that night, and they, you know they did a tribute to him and. Uh, it was announced he died in his sleep uh, overnight. And, uh, you know, so he was not just a Chicago Bear. He was everything. You know, he was uh, old. He was so beloved by people, not football fans, not Bears fans, all people, including me. You know, because. Uh, I watched him. Uh, I didn't watch him when he played football, but I did wa uh, see a lot of acting roles that he did, which I'll get to in a moment. And so I'll talk about his biography, where he was born, and uh, his football career first. That's that's very important to most people. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So he was born December 9th, 1942, in Chicago. He he was born, uh, I, I found his address. He lived on 103rd Street and Lowell Avenue. That was uh, east of Halstead in the Roseland neighborhood. I think it's Fernwood, but it's Roseland. And I used to I used to live in that area, you know, but I think he left. Uh, maybe his family left uh, at the time. And uh, he... He began uh, his football c career at uh, at the high school, Chicago Vocational High School. That's located on um, like 87th and Jeffrey uh, in the South Chicago neighborhood. I think it's South Chicago, I believe. Yeah. So uh, I know that high school. It's a beautiful uh, building uh, that was... Um, it was opened uh, in 1941. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. And uh, he was a linebacker in the Center for Illinois Fighting Alumni, so that's great. And uh, I don't know what position he played in high school. Probably the same, you know. And uh, he start, he uh, played college uh, from 1962 to 1964. And then he started playing for the Bears in 1965. Yeah. 
And he was there for eight years until 1973. And, uh, you know, and let's see, he... Let's see. He's the youngest of eight children. Oh, that's a lot of kids. <laughs> like that. And uh, when he was little, he always wanted to play football. Always wanted to play football. You know, and uh, when you have a passion for something and you want to, you know, make something out of yourself, and he did, and he did play. And uh, he was amazing. He really was. So that's great like that. And uh, so, you know, but that was the only football team he played. That was. And uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So let's see what else. Uh, yeah. Then after he uh, retired, I think he had a bad knee. He couldn't play anymore or something like that. Uh, yeah, but he had surgery uh, about a couple of years prior like that. And let's see. So um, let's see. Then he started his acting career. Yeah. So he did a lot of credits, a lot, a lot of television credits. Uh, his first one was uh, the TV movie Brian Song that was about Brian Piccolo and uh, Gail Sayers. And he was uh, he was in the movie. He wasn't credited. So he was in there like that. And uh, let's see. So. I will uh, read some of the credits, not all of them, but uh, the first TV show he appeared was in 1974, in Emergency. <laughs> I like that show. And then uh, there were more, uh, like, for example, Macmillan and Wife. He did uh, TV movies. Uh, his, let's see, I think his first movie. Yeah, his first movie was called... Uh, uh, Cry Onion. That was in 1975. He did that. Yeah, that's amazing. He also, uh, let's see, he was in Six Million Dollar Man, which I remembered. Uh, he was also in the Rockford Files. He played himself. <laughs> uh, he also played in the TV miniseries Rich Man, Poor Man. I used to watch that when I was a kid. That was great. Also, the other movie, oh, the uh, two other movies I remember he was on Mother, Jugs, and Speed. That's with Raquel Welsh. And uh, also Gus with the donkey uh, with a mule that played football. <laughs> I saw this movie at the what's that called the theater. I can't think of the name. Um, I can't think of the theater. It's in Oakland. Oh, jeez, oh, <laughs> I'll think of it in a minute. You know, yeah. So uh, yeah, I saw it. It was in it was in Oakland in Ninety Fifth Street. Uh, so, and uh, I went with my family over there, and uh, that was the first time I saw uh, Gus over there. And let's see, so, um, well, I'll think of the theater in a moment. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Yeah, so I saw Gus, and it was hilarious, you know, the um, and yeah, Dick Buckus was there. <laughs> Other uh, TV series, Wonder Woman. He was with Bubba Smith, you know, and they used to do the light beer commercials, you know, Taxi, Fantasy Island, Vegas, Matt Houston, Simon and Simon. Uh, he also started in a TV series, Blue Thunder with Bubba Smith. That came out in 1984. That was based on the movie. He did that. Also, he was in The Love Boat. <laughs> Also, the movie Johnny Dangerously, Murder, She Wrote. That was shown on Channel 9 uh, yesterday. You know, and I, I have it on DVD. He also did uh, Hamburger, the motion picture. <laughs> yeah, also, Matlock, Growing Pains, Kate and Nally. He played himself. Also, another TV series that he was a regular was My Two Dads. That was with... Uh, Paul Reiser and Greg Evigan. He was a, yeah, I remember the show. Also, he was in Gremlins 2, the <laughs> sequel of the Gremlins. I remember it. I saw this on in the theater, I think at uh, Chicago Ridge Theater. 
Uh, then there was Necessary Roughness. He was in the movie. And other TV shows, MacGyver. Uh, he was in Coach, you know, with Craig T. Nelson. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Any Given Sunday, he was in that movie. And uh, he was also uh, the Bernie Mac show. He did that. Yeah, so that's that's great. All right, so right now I'm going to play a commercial of Dick Buckus. Uh, there's a lot of light beer commercials he did with Bubba Smith, but I found one where he did for the Ford Thunderbird car. So uh, here's a commercial of him and then a young lady. They were talking about the new Ford Thunderbird from 1978. So uh, just uh, relax and uh, just listen, and I'll be right back with the rest of the show. Thank you, everyone. Dick Butkus here with Debbie Meredith at Chicago's Torrance Avenue Ford plant, where we build a new Ford Thunderbird. Just look at that styling. The interior is traditional Thunderbird luxury, and the ride, fantastic. Right, Debbie. You know how some car makers have cut down on size this year? Well, not the new T-Bird. It's kept its five-passenger size. And it's standard equipment, too. So test drive a Thunderbird today. You'll get a great car and a great deal, too. At any one of your 93 Ford dealers. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial uh, of of the Ford Thunderbird from 1978 featuring Dick Butkus. And that was, uh, he, according to the commercial, it was at the Ford uh, plant uh, on Torrance Avenue on the southeast side of Chicago. It's still there. And uh, I think they're on strike, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I hope they're not. I, I guess they are. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, but he did a lot of commercials, and he, most was for light beer. I found one commercial on YouTube where he did a Schick razor, you know, electric razor. You can find that. And, uh, oh, there, the, the light beer commercials are hilarious with Bubba Smith. I think there was one with Bob Euchre and Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> Oh, they're classics. They really are. Uh, um, recently, uh, before he passed away, uh, Dick Buckus was on Twitter, call X now, and he was uh, tweeting about or posting, you know, about the Bears, how bad they're doing and all that. Or uh, he would offer his uh, opinion. And, you know, to me, he seemed kind of blunt and brutally honest <laughs> about what's going on. And it's funny. And, you know, once he signed on Twitter, I think it was last year or this year, he gained so many followers. It's like, whoosh, you know, like that. Oh, that's, that's, a, I follow him too. So um, that's beautiful. That really, uh, that really is. And, um, you know, he was interviewed on television uh, many times over the years, uh, sometimes in Los Angeles. But, you know, when he came to town, you know, he would stop by and uh, he's a very likable person. He really is. According to most people, uh, he may be gruff and mean and on the football field. But actually, uh, a lot of people, you know, that he met, uh, he was very kind and uh, very polite. You know, he would talk to you, which is great. That is that is wonderful. Uh I think, uh, I believe a lot of people will miss him. Uh, I will too, you know. So my condolences to the family, you know. You know, that's, uh, it's very sad. Okay. Right now we're going to talk about Chiclet's gum. Now, I was just searching through the internet and I happened to notice that. And, you know, I haven't seen this gum for quite a while. And I, and I was saying to myself, what happened? Where is it? And uh, so I'll talk about a little history of that, and then I'll tell you where it is now. So here we go. So Chicklets was a, it was a gum, it was candy coated. It was, and uh, it was introduced in 1900 by the American Chickle Company. And uh Founded by Thomas Adams, which that's uh, famous gum, uh, Adams gum. Do you remember uh, there was in the 70s, there was a 
uh, they had like chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry gum. That's from there. And I can't think of anything else. So uh, I guess that is. So the chiclet's name uh, was derived from the Spanish word chicle. Means as sticky stuff, you know, or it's like a natural gum like that. And uh, so, uh, so when this started, uh, I remember growing up with this gum. Uh, I used to see it in the grocery stores, uh, sometimes drug stores. You know, I would buy. I would. I tried all flavors of this gum when I was growing up. And I remember uh, when I lived in Roseland and I went to Pullman, no, not Pullman Park. There was a park uh, near Pullman uh, Elementary School in the Pullman area. And there was a store on the corner and uh, my mom knew the, the people. And the so they had this gum and that's where I first saw it. And uh, I asked my mom, can I buy some gum? She said, yeah, go ahead. And the uh, first one I tried was uh, Spearmint, which is pretty good. So um, the flavors that uh, they had available were Spearmint, Peppermint, uh, let's see, uh, Cinnamon, uh, maybe Wild Cherry, probably. Uh, there was a flavor called Pepsin. Uh, pepsin is like... How do you describe it? Like sassafras, you know, kind of a licorice, kind of like that. Uh, I don't think they make it anymore. Uh, if you remember Beeman's gum, they used to have pepsin flavor. Uh, they took it out. And uh, I never had it. I never had the pepsin. Uh, so there was spearmint, peppermint, cinnamon. Uh, they had bubble gum, also fruit flavor. I think it was called Tutti Fruity before. And... Uh, See what else other flavor they had? Maybe lemon, lime. Maybe uh, I don't think so. Uh, then uh, they came in the fun size uh, pack. It was the teeny, uh, the tiny ones, like that. And uh, so it's the tiny size, you know, a fun size. And there was like a cowboy on the on the on the bag, you know. And there was a little window, plastic window, and you could see all the little miniature chiclets in there and then when you open them you can you know take a handful and just put it in your mouth they're, they're very very small you start chewing uh, a couple of people complained because uh the flavors didn't last long <laughs> i i guess they were right so you know but my favorite flavor was spearmint i love spearmint and fruit flavor was second so that's good Okay, so right now I'm going to play a commercial for Chiclet's Gum. This is uh, from 1969. And when I come back, I'll talk a little bit more about Chiclet's, okay? So just sit back and relax, everyone, and I'll be right back. Thank you, everyone. You're on a diet. You want to eat. Your willpower is getting weaker. Quick, a box of willpower. New Chicklets. Chicklets chewing gum has a flavor coating that helps satisfy you fast. Only six calories each. Six that may give you the willpower to resist hundreds of calories a day. Help win your battle against calories with colorful, delicious new Chicklets flavor coated gum. A box of willpower. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the uh, commercial for Chicklets gum. It came from 1969. Uh, now I remember what theater I saw, the uh, the 1975 movie, Gus. It was at the Coral Theater in Oakland, of course. <laughs> how, how could it be so stupid? I forgot all about it. It's like everyone missed that theater so much uh, that was located in Oakland. And uh, it was still missed to this day. You know, they tore it down and now it's a shopping plaza. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the chick, so... What happened to chiclets? Uh, it was discontinued in 2016, and it was uh, uh, by the company of Mondelez Company. I think they're like in Nabisco, part of that. And all of a sudden, about three years later, it reappeared and manufactured in Mexico. Uh, I have not seen it in 
here in the United States. So uh, I don't know if you can find it on Amazon. Maybe. Maybe you can. Uh, but we don't. I don't know if it's the same formula. Or it tastes the same. I have no idea. But it's a shame, you know. And uh, so that's uh, that's terrible. Oh, in, you know, in Greek it's called tsikla. <laughs> used to hear that. My parents used to say that, and other people like that. So yeah, but my, but I also love the fun size. That's uh, I look forward to that. You know, but I mentioned spearmint was my favorite flavor, but the the fun size, you know, with the teeny ones, you know, like you grab a handful and just put it in your mouth. That was great. It really was. It was a good product. It really was. Uh, uh, sometimes peppermint you know, is great when, you know, if you have bad breath or ate something garlicky or something like that, you pop in a peppermint chiclet. That would do it. Because I tried that. It works. It really does. Okay. All right. So that's it for this show. Uh, I'll do a recap of what I said. I'm sorry. Well, what I talked about on the program. Uh, I did my tribute to Dick Buckus of the Chicago Bears. And I also discussed uh, Chicklet's Gum. Uh, this podcast will be published later on today. Wherever podcasts are available. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Amazon Music. Uh, please subscribe. You get a notification uh, that a new episode is ready to listen. Also, it'll be on my blog, BannerChicagoLand.blog. Also, it'll be posted on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Banner Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Please subscribe. You know, people always still ask me, where do I, where do I find your podcast? You can find it's easily, excuse me, it's easier uh, for people to just go to YouTube and just listen or just watch. Well, when you watch, it's just a picture. <laughs> and also be uh, shared on my social media accounts, Facebook, X, uh, Instagram, and threads. So you click on the link. Okay. Uh, I won't do a podcast tomorrow because I have plans. So you know, I won't be home, so I will do another episode Tuesday. Yeah, I'll be doing Tuesday. We'll, I'll see what I'm going to talk about. Okay. So uh, this is Pico Sinus, your host of Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Thank you for joining me. I had a wonderful time. This weekend is chilly. Ew, it's cold. It's, you know, it's very cold. But it's sunny outside. It looks beautiful, you know. So, uh It'll be like that for Sunday as well. So it's October. It's fall. It's my favorite time of year. It really is. So uh, thank you again for joining me for, on the program. And uh, here's bye-bye for me. And uh, here's a little traveling music from Ray Rayner saying bye-bye-bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>